is for all of us tonight. And in just the, it's going to touch our hearts and make a difference in our lives. Uh, so, Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Wholeness in Your Spirit, Soul, and Body. You know, there was a woman that contacted us today. And yes. She said uh, she was facing chaos on every turn. Yeah. And uh, the answer, I, I believe, is uh, what we're going to cover tonight, that uh, God wants to make you whole, wants to make that woman whole in her spirit, soul, and body. Yes. I mean. uh, this is something the Lord spoke to me uh, in uh, 1997 on July the 4th, and it brought freedom to me. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. But it was in particular this one verse. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read it in the first uh, Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole. See, there's two different words there. One is holy, H-O-L-Y, and the other is whole, W-H-O-L-E. And so he does both. He makes you holy and whole. Mm -hmm. He makes everything holy and whole. So Hallelujah. Sherry's reading uh, this verse from the message mm -hmm. translation. Make you holy and whole. Put you together. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul, and body. And keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. That, that's exciting. We can be whole in our spirit, in our soul, and in our body. And that's the only way we're going to overcome uh, chaos that surrounds us. We have to start on the inside because God always starts on the inside and works his way out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, that we're really made up of three parts, the spirit, uh, the soul, and the body. And uh, we need to have all of these uh, put together, and that's what you know, the verse said. He puts all of us together. And Jesus came, and, and uh, this verse is familiar with all of us. That in Luke four eighteen, he came to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. And Amen. Uh, uh, like I've said before, I, I for years I never saw myself as a brokenhearted, but in reality I am. I I was the brokenhearted that Jesus yeah. came for. If there had been nobody else on the earth, he would have come for me to heal my broken heart. Hallelujah. A lot of things. And I'm not going to go into all the things that have uh, fragmented and uh, wounded me and hurt my heart. But a lot of damage was done to my heart, to my innermost core being, the core mm -hmm. being. And that's happened to all of us. All of the things, all of the terrible things that have happened in our lives, uh, it's, it's related to wounding and fragmenting uh, the spirit of man, your spirit person, and your very core, the very heart. And that's what the devil comes to do. He comes to steal, steal kill, and destroy, destroy, but he particularly wants to damage you, wound you in your heart. And uh, the only thing we're going to uh, be able to overcome that is through the Lord. And like mm -hmm. Jesus said, I've come to heal the broken heart, put the pieces back together. And uh, uh, one of the things we're going to address tonight is your innocence. Do you believe that uh, Jesus came to restore all things? Well, that's what it said about Malachi. There's, I'm going to send you Elijah. And that's the spirit of Elijah. And uh, then it says he's going to restore all things. It's really talking about the spirit of God upon Jesus Christ. And he's came to restore all things. Can he restore everything concerning your life? If he can restore your innocence, he can restore everything. And you might say, well, but I had my innocence stolen from me or, or I gave it up uh, uh, not knowing the consequences of that. But we're going to talk about restoring your innocence today. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. I, I've uh, married uh, some people and I, I like to, uh, when I marry them, I like to talk about God wants to restore your innocence. So before you get married, uh, it's good to know. And, th and these are or some, some of them were people that had already been uh, married before. But 
I knew in my heart that's something God wanted to do with them uh, before they could uh, uh, come together in the, uh, in the wedding and the marriage relationship. He wanted to restore mm -hmm. uh, their innocence. And that's the same for all of us. And, and although we're really talking about restoring everything, Hallelujah. And healing everything and bringing back all the pieces and healing all the Putting us together. I like that. Putting us together in our spirit, soul, and body. And, uh, you know, it's easy to say, oh, that verse is there. And uh, so it's happened. And, and so God sees you holy and whole in Jesus Christ. But nonetheless, there is a process. And you are walking in that process to become holy and to be whole. Hallelujah. And, and so it's a process that goes on. Uh, day by day and, and uh, through your whole life and, and we never get through that process it we are being made whole we're being made holy we're, you know Jesus said sanctify he said he prayed to the father in John 17 to, to sanctify the disciples and that's you and me and we're sanctified by the truth so the more truth you have um, then the more we're sanctified and sanctified is that process mm -hmm. of being made holy and that's what we all have to go through and so it's a process it's a day by day process and, and if you think about uh, your spirit man that's your core that's the very innermost being it's not the uh, heart uh, that pumps blood but it's your core, and that's that's what I'm talking about, the spirit man, and we want that uh, to be made whole, and I want you to think, and I think this is a good way to look at your a spirit man. Your spirit man contains everything the Ark of the Covenant Ooh. contains, Hallelujah. so let's think about the Ark of, of the, the Covenant. covenant. That's something that God gave a pattern to, uh, to uh, Moses to build this chest, a chest out of wood and, and overlay it with, with gold, uh, gold. And, and he put some things in it, and they're very important things that he put in it, uh, because that's what he's put inside of you. Well, on the top of the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant is the mercy seat, mm -hmm. and, and so that's one of the things you have that you carry mm -hmm. in your spirit mm -hmm. is everything that was in the Ark of the Covenant. And there were angels around it, and, and there was the mercy seat. So you carry in your spirit. Now, your spirit is not the mercy seat, but you carry within you everything the Ark of the Covenant carried. And, and so you carry the mercy with you, and you carry the angels with you. The angels are all around you. But let's look inside uh, what was in the Ark of the Covenant. Well, the first thing you put in there were the Ten Commandments. And so for our perspective, we'd say the ark contained the word of God. And so your spirit, man, you want to, you, now we can have the word of God up here in our memory, in our intellectual uh, area, in our soulish area. But when it becomes alive to you, it comes alive here in, in your, your spirit. spirit, man. In your belly. In, in your very core. And, and that's where the word is powerful. See, uh, intellectual power is not very powerful, but the spiritual power that comes out of the word of God becoming alive to you, that becomes very powerful. Well, what else uh, did the Ark of the Covenant contain? Well, one of the things they, they did, they went out and gathered some manna from heaven. And they called it manna because they didn't know what else to call it. And so, so that's the food from heaven. So the food that angels eat and the Ark of the Covenant included a pot of uh, angel food, uh, food that angels care, uh, ate and it sustained them. And, and that's what is inside of your spirit. That's not your spirit. It's what your spirit contains. So the word of God and the bre bread of life, see, oh, hallelujah. Uh, that becomes uh, what you carry. Now, everything that was in the Ark of the Covenant, you carry in your spirit, man. You think about the Ark of the Covenant, it was carried on the shoulders of the priests. 
And, and but you're a priest. You're a royal priest, 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a priest. And so you carry uh, everything that was in the ark. Uh, and, 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 the, and the goal was for, it was a symbol of deity. So you carry, oh, wow. you carry the very presence of God. Mm -hmm. And another thing that they put in the ark of the covenant was Aaron's staff that budded. And so it was an almond. Uh, so it was just a stick. Uh, but it was cut from an almond tree, and uh, they did a test one day to see who the leaders of God's people was, and it turned out to be Aaron, because nobody else's stick came back alive, but his stick came alive. It produced uh, uh, buds mm -hmm. and blossoms and even almonds, and so uh, they put that, they put Aaron's rod in the Ark of the Covenant, and what does that represent? Well, it means life, because his rod yeah, came alive, but it, it, it means authority because he's the one, he was the one God chose to be a leader. And so that's you. You then have within you everything the Ark of the Covenant had. Now, this is a good way for you to uh, visualize what mm -hmm. your spirit carries. Right. Yeah. What it carries. It, it carries, well, the most important thing, it carries the presence of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. So, where? What did they have do with the with the Ark of the Covenant? They they took it and they carried it on the shoulders of the priest, and then they put it in the temple and they put it behind the curtains. And, and so, uh, once once a year, the head priest, the the uh, uh, chief priest, would go in there and, and into the presence of the Lord. Also, if uh, the king wanted to know something from the Lord, or Moses wanted to know something from the Lord, what they were supposed to do, they would go before the presence of the Lord, before the Ark of the Covenant, and he would tell them what they needed to do. So that's what you carry. So you carry everything in the Ark of the Covenant in your core, in your spirit, man, and that includes the presence of God. His living word. I'm not talking about the dead word. I'm talking about his living word. In the manna, the bread from heaven, uh, you, you carry the authority. You carry life. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. You carry his leadership. Yes. And, and all of that is within your core. And so what did they do with it? Well, there are basically uh, several things they did with it. One was they sought the presence of the Lord there. They sought for uh, wisdom. Okay, so they um, had communion. They communed with, with the, the Lord, Lord. <laughs> there at the Ark of the Covenant. And, and so that's what we're to do. That's one of the things we're supposed to do every day with the presence of God that we carry. We're to commune with that presence. Ooh, so so we're not, we don't have to go to a church building. We don't have to go uh, to a mountain. We don't have to go to Jerusalem. The, we're carrying the presence of God. We commune with him daily. That's one of the things, if you want to, we're, we're talking about making your spirit whole. How are we going to make our spirit whole? Well, we've got to start communing. We've got to recognize what you are carrying and believe that you are carrying everything oh, that the Ark of the Covenant carried. You have to believe, you have to believe that. When you begin to believe that, then you begin to, to uh, be healed on the inside. God begins to put the, put the pieces of your heart back together. Mm -hmm. he, he begins to heal the brokenhearted and put yeah. the pieces uh, back together when you understand that. Uh, there's really three things that I want to talk about, that presence that you carry. And one, we need to communicate uh commune with him daily and that's really where the anointing is and so we need to recognize that's where we hear from him uh, the anointing that's the holy spirit rising up oh, and yeah. giving us a witness we ought to go this way we don't need to go that way we go straight ahead don't turn left don't turn right so it's the no anointing that, uh, that that gives you a witness and of what to do and, and uh, which which direction uh, which direction to go. Okay, so that's a real important way for you to visualize how important your spirit man is and, and what it contains, what your spirit 
contains. It's everything that was in the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I want Sherry to read a verse out of Proverbs 18, 14. But what I want you to see here, you need your spirit healthy. You need it strong. And that's what this message is about today because we want to be whole in our spirit, our soul, and our body. But it starts, everything starts with God on the inside, in the spirit, in the, spirit, in the core of your very being. So let's look at what happens when we have a healthy and a strong spirit? This is Proverbs 18, 14, out of the message translation. A healthy spirit conquers adversity. But what can you do when the spirit is crushed? Okay. So it's saying, hey, if we've got a problem with our spirit, man, if, if it's fragmented, if it's wounded, if we have all these wounds, all of these hurts, all of this bitterness, I have all of this unforgiveness, all these kinds of things in our heart. What are we going to do when adversity comes? He says it's the healthy spirit that will overcome any adversity. Mm, hallelujah. And so we have to have our spirit healed. And that's real important. We have to give an example. Okay. I'm going to I'd, li you. I'd like to give you an example that just happened. Uh, yesterday, there was a, a woman that that called me, and she was in great pain. She was uh, have was having pain in in her legs and her feet and her her hips, and she could hardly walk. Uh, and she said that the pain was uh, just e excruciating, and and so uh, she was was crying on the telephone and. And, uh, and so I prayed for her and prayed for, for healing in her body. And, and then we got off the phone and, and a few moments later, I had a vision and in this vision, and it was a very strong vision and the Lord showed me her body and this vine was wrapped around both of her legs and it was, it started at her waist. So it was around her, uh, the middle part of her body, around her hips, around her legs, and around her feet. And I said, you know, Lord, what is this? And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, it's a, a spirit of bitterness that has been, she's uh, allowed that root of bitterness to come in and take over. And like Brother Fred was saying, our spirit man needs to stay clean. And that, that spirit of bitterness had gone in there and has and caused her severe pain. Uh, and, and so I called her back and I said, this is what I've seen. And again, she broke into tears and she began to, she says, I know that's right. I know that's right. And she began to repent and ask the Lord to forgive her of, of some of her thinking and some of the things that she had said about some people and things that had wounded her and hurt her. And, and the Lord began to heal. And I saw the vine begin to shrivel up and die. And, and I met with her this morning. She was joyful. She was free of pain, and I give the Lord all the praise for that, but our spirit man needs to stay clean. Amen. And Amen. healthy. Amen. Amen. Okay, I have a couple of verses I want to talk about from the uh, Gospel of Luke, uh, and the first one, it talks about where is the kingdom of God, and I'll ask Harry to read this. Luke 17, 21. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So that that's the verse that supports what I said a while ago. Everything, is everything that was in the covenant, in the ark of the covenant is in you. The kingdom is it's within, within you. you. And the way the verse starts is you can't go over there and say, oh, the kingdom's over there. Or, or the, oh, kingdom's the kingdom's over there. there. No. 
The kingdom is within you. Everything the Ark of the Covenant carried uh, that symbolized life, authority, uh, the presence of God, uh, the word of God, the bread of life, all of that is within you. And oh, what we need to do with it then is to realize, recognize it's in there and, and, and begin to fellowship and commune with the presence of the Lord. And he will give you wisdom on, on what to do. And it's all going to be coming from the authority of his word that dwells within you. Not that you have memorized up here intellectual power, but what's alive in your spirit, man. Now we'll go back to another verse, uh, and this is about uh, prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciple Simon, or we would call him Peter, mm -hmm. okay? Luke 22, verses 31 and 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail, and you, when you have turned back, you will strengthen your brothers. Okay. The reason I wanted to go over this, and I know I, this is a real important verse to me, and I go over it uh, often. I think about it often. But what I want you to see, this is a prayer for uh, that Jesus prayed for one of his disciples, and it was Simon. And uh, what I think is very, very interesting is he knew that Simon was going to be facing adv adversaries and adversity. Mm -hmm. And he did not pray that he not face adversity, that he not uh, have uh, chaos in his life. No, he didn't pray. He, see, Jesus focused on the core. He said, I'm praying for your faith. Yes. Woo, <laughs> I'm praying that your faith will yes, not fail. fail. I, I'm praying for about your things within you. Within you. <clears throat> the things you carry that are just like the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, those are the things that God works on. That's what Jesus was praying for. You know, he's praying and interceding today. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Interceding for you. He's interceding for you today. Yeah. What? What's in your core? He's praying about what's in your core. He wants your spirit. Oh, hallelujah. He wants your spirit to come alive. He wants it to not to be fragmented and and uh, all, all, all scattered. He wants it to be strong and healthy because he knows out of that core, then it, your soul is going to be healthy. Hallelujah. And then out of that, your body, body is going to be healthy. healthy. And your finances, you're going to be prosperous in your finances. So it all starts here. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He's still praying the same way. He's looking at your core and praying for your core. And that's why we need to focus. Focus on yeah, our core. Sure. What's in here? Okay, get rid of any of uh, bitterness. Get rid of any, any anger. Get rid of for it, any unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, impurities. Get rid of all of those things and the things that people have done to hurt you. And I know we've all had yeah, things all hurt us. Hurt. Yeah, we've all been wounded. We've we've all been put down. We've all experienced the, the same things, and we've experienced them over and over again. And, and we've got to get beyond that. It's important. Jesus came for this purpose to heal the brokenhearted. Recognize that you are the one that he came to heal. Glory to God. To put your heart back together. Pull all of the fragments back. Put them, make them whole, whole, and holy. Woo! Woo! Glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wait, see, Excellent. When you are whole in your spirit. See, like Proverbs 18, 14 just said, then you're going to be able to withstand. You're going to be able to withstand adversity. adversity. You're going to be able to conquer it. it you can't conquer and, and you might say, well, I, I've faced adversity and I didn't conquer it. Well, look at your, 
spirit. spirit yeah. Is your, your spirit, core. is your spirit, is it scattered? Is it fragmented? Is it, has it been wounded or is it still carrying unforgiveness and bitterness and anxiety? Those are the things we have to face. And yeah. the, the next verse I want to look at is Matthew eleven twelve. Hallelujah. Ooh, and the thing about great. this, it, it, it talks about where the, where are the pressures? Mm -hmm. see, see, mm -hmm. I know we're all facing things that are difficult. We're facing difficult situations and those are pressures from without and, and, and they're coming at you. Now let's see what we, what happens then. Mm, Matthew, Matthew 11, 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, that's now, the kingdom of heaven has been treated violently. Uh oh, there's violence coming against you. Yeah, there's, right. there's chaos coming. There's adversity coming against you. But what's going to happen? And the violent people take it by force. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about two different pressures here, two different kinds of pressures, that pressures that come from the outside. So you've got three enemies. You've got the world. You've got the flesh. And you've got the demonic. They're all coming against you. And, and Jesus is not up there uh, praying that you not face any difficulty. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he wants you to pass the test. Yes. Overcome. Overcome. That, that's what it says in the book of Revelation. You, Those that overcome. Ooh, glory. <laughs> you overcome. You've got to overcome. There are going to be tests. There's going to be difficult situations. But you've got to have enough pressure on the inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. Well, and the word violent here, the uh, about violent people, take it by force. In the Greek, the word violent means full of power and full of energy. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so we're talking about two different kinds of forces here. Forces from the outside that are coming against you. And you've got to have enough power, power from within that knocks it away, boom, knocks it away. And, and the way I want you to look at that is, okay, here comes a fly. A fly is just flying along, flying along, and, and he's flying along this railroad track. And here comes from the other side, there comes a big locomotive. <laughs> and, and so here the little fly hits the locomotive. Well, who's gonna win in that situation? The locomotive is gonna, gonna knock back that fly and it, that fly is gonna be dead, dead, dead. Okay, that's the way I want you to see it yourself. You're going to be that big locomotive that's coming out of here, the power that's coming out. Oh, how here comes a little fly. And when, when that little fly comes, you're going to rise up and you're just going to knock it out. Already. Hallelujah, because you're going to be so full of power, so full of energy, you just knock it out. Knock Hallelujah. It out. Overcome it. Glory to God. Doesn't mean there's not going to be a fly come against you, it, but you have enough power within you. To, to knock it out of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's you, Mary. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, so why can I say that? Well, I, I, I want to look, I have skip down to uh, 1 John 4.4. Uh, 4. Let's look at this. 1 John 4.4. 4. You are from God, little children. That's you. And have overcome them. You've overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Ooh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're carrying the Hallelujah. presence of God, the power of God, the authority of God. God. You're that locomotive. That locomotive, all of that is coming Hallelujah. out of the inside of you. And, and here when the little flies come, boom. Oh, wow. You just knock it out of the way. Explode them. Hallelujah. It didn't mean there's not any flies coming. No, oh, no, mm -hmm. it didn't say that. It, it, it says that greater is he that's in you. And, and so that's the, or you're carrying the Ark of the Covenant. You're carrying everything in the Ark of the Covenant. You're carrying the kingdom. And, and you have to release the power of the kingdom. Oh, and goodness. that will oh, overcome wow. adversity. Well, whenever, wow, that fly, sure. whenever that fly comes, and, and it may be a big deal. And that woman that contacted us, she was just talking about all these calamities. Let it come, but they don't compare to God. Amen. Woohoo! They don't compare. Amen. He, he's the all powerful one. Hallelujah. He, he's all knowing, yes. all powerful. All Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he, he that is in me. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Hallelujah. 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 H
So I don't care what kind of fly comes your way. The greater one is inside of you. And you have to learn how to re release his him and his power. And, and it'll be like that locomotive hitting that fly. That fly just cannot stand against the locomotive. The, the little flies of the problems that we face cannot stand against the all-powerful God. But you have to release it. But yes. you've got to have, you have to have your spirit man heal though yeah and strong see see proverbs 18 14 a healthy spirit is going to overcome the adversity it's not a fragmented uh it's not a broken spirit not no it, you don't have a broken spirit so so you've got to work on that spirit man make sure everything make sure everything inside you that you've repented of any any sin you have any unforgiveness any bitterness, so just like that woman Sherry was talking about a moment mm -hmm. ago, she had had a root of bitterness since uh, she was a child, and, and it just kept growing and growing and causing her all, all kinds of difficulty. Okay, so we're talking about a process today. Th this is not just something you wave a wand at. This is a process, and so I want Sherry to read uh, uh, from James chapter four, a and uh, where are we reading this from? Good. TPT. The Passion Action. Translation. The Passion Translation. James but, chapter 4, okay, 7 read, and 8. Read all this. So then surrender to God. Surrender to God. Okay. Stand up to the devil. Oh, I, I've got to just take a moment here. Yeah. You, you've got to stand under God. That's what submitting means. You Surrender. You, you surrender to him. You su submit to him. You stand under him. So that you can stand against, oh, the oh, devil. That's good, Brady. You, you stand under God so that you can stand against the devil. See, you see, if you're not standing under God, if you're not submitted to him, you're not surrendered to him, you can't stand against the devil. The devil will run over you. You have to, mm -hmm. first, you have to submit to God. So there's a two-step two process. You have to submit to God. You stand under him and stand against the devil. Okay, then what happens? Okay. And the devil will flee oh, in agony. In agony. Do you want to bring agony on the devil? Hallelujah. All right, go ahead. Move your heart closer and closer to God. Okay, I said this is a process we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Move your heart closer. and See, I'm talking about the heart here. This is our core. This is the spirit, man. We have to move it closer and closer. To and God. Closer and closer to God. And what's he going to do? He's going to he move. will come even closer to you. He'll come closer and closer. It's a process. Mm -hmm. So he sees you holy. He sees you whole. Hallelujah. But we have to walk in the process. We are becoming holy. We it's a sanctification is a process. We are being made whole. It's Hallelujah. a process. That's the reason I say, look at what you're carrying as the same thing that the Ark of the Covenant carried. And, and so it was a communion every day with the Lord. It's Thank not about, man. oh, I'm going to commune with today and then I, I'm not going to commune for another 10 years. No, it's a daily, yeah, yeah. it's a daily walk. It's a process. So we're getting our heart healed, made whole. Amen. Pure, clean. We're, my, we're doing that, but it's a process. Closer and closer to God. Closer and closer to God. But make sure that you cleanse your life. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there's some things we have to do. And keep your heart pure and stop doubting. Oh, I'll doubt it. Where's doubting come from? It comes up here in the mind. So what are we talking about today? The spirit, soul, and the mind. Yeah, and the and body. body. Yeah. I make them all, th all three. Whole and holy. Okay, so it, we, we've got to work with all of our parts of our body, all of the parts of our body. See, we have to be whole in our spirit, but it's also said your whole life, clean up your life, be pure in your heart. Don't doubt. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. That was it. I, I want to go doubt. down here to Romans. Roman, right? Romans, Romans 6, 6 13. 13. Okay. And do not go <laughs> on presenting the parts of your body. Oh. Wait a minute. This is New Testament. Mm. This is Romans 6, verse 13. Uh -huh. It talks about the parts. 
Oh, what are the parts we're talking about? The spirit, soul, and the body. Oh, hallelujah. Don't, don't present these parts, any of these parts. Don't present your hand. Don't present your eye to sin. Uh, don't don't, don't pre pre uh, present your ears. Don't present your ears. Don't present your mouth. None of them to sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and read this. And then. do not go on presenting the parts of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who are alive from the dead and your body's parts as instruments of righteousness we, for God. We've got to present our parts of our body, all of our part, all of our parts of our body. What, oh, uh, what, how's that little song? Uh, little ears, uh, yeah. watch what you hear, little yeah. ears, yeah. watch what you see, little eyes. Eyes, little eyes, little eyes, watch what you see. <laughs> What you're thinking with your mind, you have to think about all of the parts. You, see, what God is doing in 1 Corinthians 5.23 is making all of the parts of your body holy and whole. Hallelujah. And so we have to deal with all of our parts. We have to remember, oh, I I have to watch what I see. Oh, I have to watch what Be I'm listening careful, to. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the <laughs> Lord up above is watching over with, with, love, love, with love. Hallelujah. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the God up above is watching with you with love. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. We have to Hallelujah. all of the parts of our body and don't do them, any of them to sin. We have to present them all to God, God in because, righteousness, in righteousness, because He's making them uh, holy and whole, Ooh, spirit, soul, and by all of our parts. Mm. Woo. Glory to God. This Hallelujah. Yes, excellent. Okay. Excellent. Now. First Corinthians chapter two. It's all about mm. receiving the wisdom that's from above. And, and you know, you think about Solomon, King Solomon. When he came, when he became king, he was a, I think he's like 40 years of age. So he was not just a little uh young person, but but David had taught him and prepared him to be king. And so he's about 40. But he realized when he became king of that nation, he needed wisdom. wisdom. And so one night when he was sleeping, the Lord spoke to him and asked him what he wanted. And, and he could have asked for the heads of his enemies. He could have asked for riches, riches, a long life. But you know what Solomon asked for was wisdom. And, and, and that's what we all need. I need we wisdom, all need, I need wisdom, wisdom from above because, you know, it's like uh, when Sherry ministered to that woman yesterday and she saw that she had that uh, root of bitterness, which had been in her since she was a child. Mm -hmm. See, it was just takes one word of wisdom. And that, and that was a word of wisdom. It's yeah. it a word of knowledge, actually a word of knowledge, but a type of wisdom, uh, of, of godly wisdom. And, and uh, that set her free, set her free. So you need wisdom. So Solomon built a great kingdom, Woo! a great kingdom, and he built it with wisdom. Now, David before him had built a great kingdom, but Solomon's didn't compare with David. I mean, Solomon's far surpassed David's, yeah, yeah. but David, he, he built his a lot on the sword and uh, mm -hmm. conquest and all, but Solomon, uh, mm -hmm. wisdom. And, and, and so much more easy to use wisdom uh, to build yes. than the sword. And so we all need wisdom. And, and to have wisdom, see, to really receive that wisdom, where's it going to come from? Well, it's coming from the kingdom within you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You, you, you can't think about, well, I need to read another book. I, I, I need wisdom. Or I need to go to another service. No, I to get wisdom. No, you've you got to look inside because yeah. that's where the anointing is. That's where the presence of God is. Mm -hmm. It's within your core and, and you need those. And, and just one word of wisdom, of God's mm -hmm. wisdom, uh, will surpass 
thousands of yeah. words of man's wisdom. That's right. One thought. One thought from God. From God will surpass anything that man can give you. And, and mm -hmm. so this is the wisdom that we need. And so we need to be focusing on what's inside of us. You carry the kingdom within you. And within the kingdom is everything that was in the Ark of the Covenant. And that was so important. I just want to review it again because I'm bringing this to a conclusion. And, and everything you think about what was in the Ark of the Covenant is the presence of God, most mm -hmm. importantly. Yeah. But it was also the word of god yes and it was the bread of heaven yes uh, yes and, and, and it was the authority see that rod mm -hmm. that authority that there was life life to it and fruitfulness to it, authority and power and see you, you remember you're you're like a locomotive because greater is you greater is he that, that is, is in you me. So you've got that greatness within you, greater. And that's where I say that locomotive, anything that comes against you, you look at that as a fly, uh, a little fly just flying. And so here that locomotive coming down the track and here that fly is coming down the track. Well, who's going to win that battle? Oh, the locomotive is going to win. And greater is he that is in you. So that's that's the locomotive within you. And it's going to knock out the fly. Hallelujah. So I, I just want you to be encouraged today. Amen. So Amen. That there is a process. And what God, the end result, God wants you to be holy and whole in your spirit, soul, and body. But it's Hallelujah. a process. And, and I've, I've gone through the guidelines on how to walk in this process so that you can put all of your spirit and soul and mind and body together and make them hell, healthy and overcome all that verse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Thank yes. you for being here today. You know, and I just want to go back over First Thessalonians 5 23, where he says through the message translation that he is putting us together. I love that. He's putting us together in our spirit, our soul, our thinking, our attitude, uh, and he's putting our bodies together. Woo, hallelujah. And I, be, I believe that so that we can be fit for the master uh, to use us. And, and this is something I, I want, I desire to be used of the Lord. And I believe that each one of you do, uh, that, that 